Okay, and this is the second installment of Velocity versus Time Graphs. Um, we're going to do a quick rehash of uh, how the graph should look for a couple of different motions. Then we'll look at how we can, uh, what we can get from the slopes and areas, etc. Okay, so um, in this one we're looking at A. It's moving with negative velocity. Again, that means it is in the negative side of the graph. And negative acceleration. Now those two match. So we need to get faster. We're going to get faster in the negative direction. So we need some kind of line that goes like this. And again, the slope, as we will see down below, is equal to the acceleration. The delta V divided by delta T. Change of, a rate of change of velocity. Uh, in part B, we are moving with negative velocity and positive acceleration. So again, negative means down below. But now positive acceleration, these two are opposites. We should slow down. The slope should be positive. So it could be something like this. Again, the slope is equal to the acceleration. Now this next one leaves some room for interpretation. It says a positive direction, which would indicate we're going to be above the line. And then first fast and then slow. So that leaves us with a lot of options. Fast would be higher on the graph. Slow would be lower on the graph. We could, it doesn't say if it's constant or not, so we could have an acceleration. I'm going to take the simpler route, and I'm going to say at first we're moving with a fast, constant velocity, and then something causes us to change to a slower, constant velocity. So faster, again, will be higher on the numbers, uh, and slower would be closer to zero, and that's A. And B... Uh, we're moving in the negative direction, so we're going to be down below the line. Uh, first fast and then slow. Again, fast in the negative direction means a larger number further from zero. So it's going to be like up here, and then something's going to cause it to change, and it's going to be closer to zero. Now, in both cases, I went with a simpler version. I went with constant speed. Uh, if there was acceleration, then there'd be some slope to those lines, and they would look a little bit different. But still, it would be higher up, further from zero because of the fast, and then lower, closer to zero because of the slow. And again, those are velocity terms, not acceleration. I would never use the word fast acceleration or slow acceleration. They really don't go together. That's bad terminology. OK, as we did with p position and time graphs, we calculated the slopes, and we got um, the speed that we were moving at. With a velocity time graph, when we take the slope, we're going to get delta v over delta t. That means the rate of change of velocity, which is defined as acceleration. So uh, we're going to calculate the uh, acceleration by calculating the slope here. We need to pick two points. I'm going to pick the end two points because they're easy enough to deal with. Uh, this looks like 32. And um, eight seconds. And then this one looks like it's zero seconds, and it's about four meters per second. So to find the slope, it's going to be the initial uh, information on the vertical. So in this case, it's going to be v. Um, sorry, final first. Uh, final minus v initial. Now. That could also be written as V and U if you're talking about IV terminology. Uh, but final minus initial. And then down below, it's going to be uh, final time minus initial time. Okay, so our case is 32 minus uh, 4, and that's going to be in meters per second, divided by 8 minus 0, and that's going to be in seconds. So we get meters per second divided by seconds. That's the unit of acceleration. And so we can say the acceleration is the slope is equal to 28 divided by 8 equals uh, 3.5. It comes out to be positive meters per second per second or meters per second squared. Now, this time, we should expect a negative slope. The slope is trending downward. Uh, again, pick this end point. Now we're talking about 12 seconds. 
and that looks like eight meters per second. Again, that's not where we are, that's how fast we're moving. Uh, and then up here, it looks like at zero seconds, we are moving at 32 meters per second. So to find the slope, it's going to be the final minus the initial. So finals are over here. So it's going to be 8 meters per second minus the initial of 32 meters per second divided by 12 seconds minus 0 seconds. Uh, that's going to be a negative value. Uh, it's going to be negative 24 divided by uh, 12 and that's going to be meters per second again divided by seconds that's going to be acceleration so here we have a negative acceleration and our acceleration is uh, negative two meters per second per second again what that means is we're going to um, in this case as we move in the positive direction we're going to lose two meters per second of speed for every second that we travel. So we started out at 32, one second later we would be going 30, one second later we would be going 28, one second later we would be down to 26, etc. Uh, both of these stop or don't show us going through zero, but it is possible for objects to change direction and keep accelerating and uh, pick up speed on the other side uh, if the motion is right. But again, slope of velocity time graph is the acceleration. It's not how fast you're going, it's how fast you're getting faster or how fast you're getting slower. Okay, so this one dealt with slopes. This one dealt with finding the acceleration value. Uh, the other big advantage of a velocity time graph is we can use the space below the graph line to determine how far we've gone, which we couldn't do with position time graph. So we'll show you how to use areas in the next segment on uh, velocity time graphs.